Welcome to the Marketing Nomad Show, the fun pit stop for all things Instagram, where I also share my entrepreneurial journey, some of my lessons, wins, and challenges along the way, so it can inspire you to get started and grow on Instagram as well. Welcome to episode number 26 of the Marketing Nomad Show, guys. I'm your host, now today we're kind of going to talk about the seven pillars of Instagram. Now throughout my journey as a marketer and you know as an entrepreneur trying to grow my business on Instagram, I've also figured out that there are seven different aspects to Instagram that when you combine all of these different aspects together and mix it all up, give it equal attention, you can actually achieve the success that you are looking for on Instagram. So today we're kind of gonna go into each of these pillars. I've got my notes ready, I've got me ready, and uh, yeah, let's get started on this episode, guys. So talking about me getting ready, today as I was you know, combing my hair for this podcast episode, which is probably the only time that I do comb my hair, guys, as an entrepreneur. Um, So, uh, yeah, I think it's just the perks of working from home. Okay, so as I was combing my hair, I kind of remembered this viral video that's been going on about how Gen Z thinks that millennials are a little old-fashioned with us parting our hair. Apparently, Gen Z thinks that when we side part our hair, we are old. And I tried to middle part my hair, you know, in an attempt to kind of look younger or fit in with the cool crowd who are apparently now the Gen Z and it didn't turn out very well guys. I am going to stick to my side partition. Thank you very much Gen Z. So I'm not going to take their advice on this and side partitions definitely work the best for me. And I have also been observing like different people, whoops that was my pen, I have been observing different people as well and I honestly think, you know, people who like side partitions are actually, you know, it kind of works for them. So I'm not exactly sure what to do with this viral video that's been going on, but that's my opinion, guys, and I felt like I really had to share it because I was literally like combing my hair and I'm like, "Uh, do I do a middle partition? Do I do a side partition? What is going on? Um, Do I really want to be with the cool kids or do I just do what looks good to me? So middle partition made me look like I was part of the horror movie Annabelle and I was like, nope, I am sticking to my side partition. So that was my mini rant, guys. We are going to get into the seven pillars of Instagram success. Now I've got my notes ready, okay? So let's go, guys. Now, for those of you who are listening on any of the popular podcast hosting services, if I could call them, this entire podcast episode has a video version on YouTube as well. I'll put the links in the description box below, okay? Alrighty, guys. So now let's go on to pillar number one. And pillar number one is branding. It is by far the first and also the biggest chunk of your entire Instagram success, all right? And I think that when people hear branding, you know, the word branding, they think that it is most likely to do with colors or picking out your logo or the visual aesthetics of it. Um, I, I think I wanted to say aesthetics. Aesthetics. God, what is wrong with me? Get yourself together, Prit. All right, guys. Um, so the visual aesthetics of your brand, and while those are important, that doesn't necessarily constitute the entire part of your branding. So today in this episode, I'm going to talk a little bit about what exactly branding is all about. What are the different aspects of branding that you also need to focus on, and not just your logo and you know the visual parts of it. And we're also going to uh, kind of figure out one or two questions that you can ask yourself while you are getting started with your branding. Now, the first and foremost thing about your brand or your branding journey is you need to understand why you are doing what you're doing. And this is something that I also teach my tribe members at the Insta Savvy Tribe. It is my membership program where I help entrepreneurs such as yourself with their Instagram. It's a monthly membership program at $39 a month or $350 for the entire year. So that this is also something that I tell my tribe members as well. 
I tell them that, you know, when it comes to your branding, you need to understand the why of what you're doing. And if your reason is, well, I want to grow on Instagram, or I want a successful company, or I feel like I'm, I'm destined to be an entrepreneur, then those are not the reasons that actually drive your brand. There needs to be a deeper purpose. There needs to be a higher reason why you are doing what you're doing. The ultimate goal of your company, of your brand. Okay, and it definitely needs to serve a higher purpose that like I said, so this would be your company mission or your brand mission, the vision that you see, what are your goals, you need to outline all of these as part of your branding. And the reason why this is so important is because as you go down, down the line, it can get so easy to be distracted by every new thing that comes along and you start to forget what your brand mission and your brand vision was all about. So in order to keep yourself very aligned with your initial brand goals, you need to make sure that it is available somewhere for you to see. Okay, and this is where something called a brand guidance doc actually comes into play. And this is something that I personally use for my own business as well. And this is also something that I recommend to my tribe members. They actually do have an entire template, which is extremely detailed and comprehensive in the membership program. But let me give you a small outline of what that brand guidance document should be all about. So you actually start a brand guidance document, maybe on a Google Doc. I highly recommend Google Doc because you can go and change anytime. It's accessible and basically when you start growing as well, you have you can you know put collaborators on that uh, Google document and you can grow that page as well. So okay. So in your brand guidance document, what's the first and foremost thing that is so important for you to put is your brand mission, your vision, your goals, and where do you get where do you see yourself basically? So those form the core value or the core part of your branding. And whoever comes on board, suppose tomorrow you hire a marketer, suppose tomorrow you hire an accountant, whoever it is that you do hire, they need to follow by those brand values, those, those mission stuff that you put along because they as your employee needs to, they need to embody your branding as well, okay? So this is super, super important. So here are some of the stuff that comes in your brand guidance document. You can put in your logo, maybe if you have specific fonts that you want to use for your brand specifically, that also comes in your brand guidance doc, um, who your customers are, maybe if you have specific marketing language that you use only for maybe um, to sell your product or to talk to your audience, all of those phrases come under your brand guidance document. Of course, there's a ton of other things that you can keep adding on, but the basis of this brand guidance document is for you to keep adding as you go along because there's definitely gonna be more things that come along. Now, one aspect of branding, which I'm pretty sure that I just touched upon, is uh, you know the need for consistent messages. And here's the reason why your customers are not only going to find you on one platform, okay? They're gonna maybe find you on your website. They're maybe gonna find you on Instagram. Maybe they're gonna find you on Instagram, check you out on your website, and then maybe they're gonna check you out on LinkedIn. So you need to be sure that wherever they find you, they are receiving consistent messages about your brand. And this is super, super important for the number one reason that it takes a customer at least at least guys, seven times of looking at your marketing messages, at your product, at your services, for them to make a decision about your product or your service, okay? So that's seven different, at least, that's at least guys, and this is not me uh, you know, making up my own numbers, this is actually based on a ton, a ton of research. So at least seven times. So if they see one marketing message that's different on your website and then they see another marketing message that's completely different on your Instagram page and then another marketing message that's completely different on LinkedIn, that's actually three different marketing messages that they have seen. Versus if all three of them were the same, 
exactly the same content, the language, and you know, you use the same emojis, you use the same words, then that actually equals to three times of them looking at your marketing message and three times, three out of at least seven times of them registering that this is, this is a valuable product or if this is a valuable service and it helps them consider your product or service, okay? So that's exactly why it's so important for you to be consistent with your marketing messages. And this is something that I emphasize all the time, guys. You know, your visual aesthetics, yes, those are super important, but you also need to worry about this aspect as well. And one more reason why your brand mission and your core values are so important is because you never know how it will resonate with your audience as well. Maybe a core part of your branding is about you being raw and authentic. And that is the kind of customer that you want to attract for your brand as well. So ensuring that you have those core values, you have a set, a set of predefined mission for your branding helps you okay so at this point you know a few questions that you can ask yourself would be what is your ultimate vision for your brand what is it that you can offer what is it that you offer that you know your competitors don't okay you can also ask yourself what is the impression that you would like to uh, portray for your customer what is the tone do you want to use for your language or your voice of the brand and then you can also ask how do you want people to feel when they see your brand? Do you want them to feel empowered? Do you want them to feel nice, warm, and cuddly? There's so many different ways that a brand can make people feel and understanding how your brand is going to make people feel is a really good way of you progressing your mission into reality, okay? So that basically wraps up pillar number one, and that is branding. So yes, the visual aspects are important, choosing your colors, colors that represent you, um, even including your logo, something that resonates with you, all of those things, but understand that there's a lot more to branding than just that, okay? So that is pillar number one, guys. Pillar number two on Instagram is called visibility. Now. Here's the thing, you know, you can be posting as much as you want, you can have all the other pillars, but the reason why this pillar is so important is because without visibility, naturally, people are not going to see your account. So you need to engage in activities that are going to help you be visible to other people, whether it is using the right hashtags, okay? Whether it is getting on to the latest trend that's happening on Instagram, for example, Reels, and even in Reels, there are a few trending ones. So hopping on to the latest trend, hopping on to what your audience wants, hopping on to basically what the community is moving forward towards, that is always a good place for you to start with respect to visibility. It's also got to do with your profile as well. You need to make sure that your profile can be found when someone looks for those keywords. Instagram is moving towards an SEO friendly sort of application, I guess. So basically they want you to be found okay so they are helping content creators like us so in order to be found when someone searches you you need to have those keywords in your entire bio or at least somewhere in your captions maybe maybe you can use your alt text for individual pictures and include what that picture is about so that people can actually search and find you. So visibility is a huge aspect of it because you do want to be found. At the end of the day, this entire thing that we're doing on Instagram is because we want to be found. It's as simple as that. We're not doing this for, you know, just for fun, right? I mean, it is fun, but there's also a business aspect um, and that, that visibility and that growth that we are looking for, okay? So when it comes to visibility as well, you want to make sure that you know you are engaging with other accounts you are commenting on people's accounts who have similar audiences to yours you want to comment on other people's accounts who are your target audience as well so these are different tactics that you can use so that you are putting your account all the way out there because it's not always people find you you need to put yourself out there so that they can see you so that's where the conundrum is okay and another aspect of this 
is you know once you have put yourself out there you've done all of this you put the amazing hashtags your content is awesome um you know your captions are on point you've done the alt text as well and you've also engaged with other accounts another aspect of visibility is that you know when people come to your account okay you get at least 8 to 15 seconds to make an impression and that's a marketing standard it's just based on like tons of research that people usually make their first impressions of a brand within 8 to 15 seconds but on instagram guys believe me you have actually lesser than eight seconds to make that mark and the reason is because people on instagram the entire mindset is completely different okay they're in a hurry even when you're scrolling through your newsfeed imagine yourself you are always in a hurry even when you're looking through stories nobody actually is patiently watching through every single story no people want to consume more content in the time that they have so it's literally less than eight seconds that you have to make that first impression so in order to make the right first impression what is it that you have to do okay you have to make sure that your bio explicitly explains what your page is all about and not just what your page is all about what benefit your audience is going to get from your page and the benefit not necessarily is well educational content no not necessarily it can even be value it can be uh, you know memes it can be humor it can be even if you are putting your life out there maybe you can say you know uh, fun looking i mean looking through my life with fun glasses or something like that oh my god that was super lame uh but i had to come up with that on spot guys uh, if you gave me more time i would probably come up with something better but you know you kind of get the flow of what i was talking about uh you need to make sure that whatever you know you are posting you are talking about the benefit for them what is it that they are going to get because at the end of the day they don't know you at all. You need to talk about how you benefit them versus how they can benefit you or what you are all about. Remember, it's not about you, it's about them. They are the ones who are making that decision to follow you, okay? So at the end of the day, you have less than eight seconds, in my opinion, to make that impression. And that includes, you know, having an awesome profile picture, having your bio all set up, keeping your highlights so that it is exactly what your audience is looking for, making sure that your aesthetics on your page is inviting enough. It doesn't have to be picture perfect or beautiful anymore. It's not like that anymore, but it does have to be inviting enough. It does have to be interesting enough for them to want to follow you or click that button. So basically all of that comes under visibility and that wraps up pillar number two for us, okay? Now, pillar number three is authority. Now, authority means that you obviously want to be seen as some sort of an expert. And when I say expert, I don't necessarily mean that, again, you don't have to give educational value to be seen as an expert. Value can mean different things to your audience, okay? Value can probably mean memes. Value can probably mean that you are a page that rates dogs and, you know, you do it in a very different way, you do it in a more fun way, and that itself is value. You are the expert of, you know, rating dogs on Instagram. That page is on my mind because I saw this really, really cute um, picture of this really cute dog just before I got on here, so that's on my mind right now. Just a side track over here. Okay, um, so yeah, basically, it doesn't necessarily mean that you know you have to give educational content. No, even if you are talking to people about your life, do it in a different way. F figure out what makes you different, okay? You might be an expert at something, maybe you are an expert at. Uh, you know, the way you talk or the way you plan your stuff, show all of that. It doesn't necessarily have to be educational. Maybe you're super funny. Show them that. Okay, so expert, and for those of you, you know, listening on the podcast, I actually kind of did these two things with my hand where I coped, uncoated expert. So, yes. So, not necessarily means educational or expert. No. So think about how you can be the authority in your field without 
uh, you know, compromising on your branding and also on your visibility. Now, this can come, you know, in a different number of ways. As long as you provide value to your customers, you are good to go, okay? Whether it's making them laugh or giving them mini tips every now and then, whether it is giving them um, entertainment value when you are giving them an insight to your life, whatever it is, you need to figure out how you can be seen as an authority, okay? So that was pillar number three, guys. Pillar number four is showing up. And this is so, so important, especially when you are a business page, because when people view your page, they know that yes, you are trying to sell something. Yes, you are selling either your product or service. And automatically, their mind tends to feel that you are going to sell them something. And that kind of makes them put their walls all the way up. And it's a very natural thing. I probably also do that. You also subconsciously do that when you, you know, try to follow a business page or when you are following them. Uh, you always look at them with a little bit of, you know, skepticism saying, okay, when are they going to sell? So at the end of the day, you want them to shift from that mindset of, okay, there's a catch over here or, okay, they're going to sell to me or okay this is a business page and you want to shift that entire mindset to wow i really like this person i really like what they're trying to build i really like their mission i really like you know what their values are i really like the purpose of this brand i really like how this business or this person is transforming lives over here so you kind of want to make that mindset shift and the only way for you to make that mindset shift is for you to show up and to show up authentically okay so whether it is showing up on your stories showing them your face showing them behind the scenes of your life showing them behind the scenes of maybe your product launch or how your product is made or maybe you helping a client whatever it is showing up as yourself really makes a difference because they start to view the page as a person rather than a business they start to form that emotional bond with you they start to understand that yes you are trying to sell them something but there's a higher purpose to what you're doing. You are doing what you're doing because you are there to transform lives. And that is the kind of relationship and the connection that we are looking for as entrepreneurs as well. We want to find an audience who understands our purpose. We want to find an audience that gets us, okay? That gets what our business is doing. And from a business perspective, an audience like that is always, always, always going to root for you. They're going to share your work. They're going to comment. They're going to be highly engaging. They're going to love you. And what more can we ask for as a business, right? As an entrepreneur. So showing up, even though, you know, people, you probably have heard this advice a lot, like show up and you're going to be awesome. But there's actually a lot going on behind that. And I just wanted to take some time in this episode to tell you um, why people say that showing up is so important okay so i know that few of you might be a little hesitant to show yourself uh, during the initial days i would say you know take your time take as much time as you need to overcome that fear and to slowly put yourself out there it can start with baby steps it doesn't have to be full-blown okay two hours of you putting yourself out there no it doesn't always have to be it can start with you posting a picture of yourself and then you maybe doing a 10 second video, then maybe you doing a reel and then so on and so forth. You know, build it up as long as you are slowly putting yourself out there, there is nothing wrong. I know that you might, you know, fear, okay, I don't know what people are gonna say or I'm worried about so and so person commenting and in my case, I was afraid that this high school bully that, uh, you know, bullied me back in the day was going to say something weird about my page and this is true guys i mean i have i don't know when was the when which year was it that was in high school but it was a very very long time ago and i was still worried about uh what people were gonna say so it's very natural i'm i'm not saying that you know you should hold it back or that should hold you back or it's 
you know, you can forever go on like this. No, you need to learn how to overcome that and I can't help you with that. You are the only person who's going to push yourself and, you know, kind of A, either work and do it despite all of those thoughts or remove those thoughts, okay? For me, it was working despite those thoughts and over time, after you know, people started complimenting me for showing up my authentic self and being quirky and weird and all of those fun stuff that I do on Instagram, it actually gave me confidence. And that's the thing about confidence, guys. Confidence doesn't come before you do the work. It comes after you do it multiple times because it becomes second nature and that is confidence in itself. So for me personally, I had to do whatever it was that I needed to do despite all of these thoughts holding back. Now, there might be people who can remove them completely and I will admit my own shortcomings. I was not able to do that at the time. Now, today, maybe yes, that thought does come up every once in a while, but I'm a lot more open, I'm a lot more confident in, in how I present myself, I'm a lot more happy in just being me. And that takes time guys, it took me a long time to get there. The first one to two months, honestly, I did not even show up my face. Coming on my stories was super super scary because to me it felt like it was starting to get more personal. Okay, that this was going to be a one-on-one -on -one thing and uh, it took me a good two months to get over that fear and to realize that okay, I'm actually doing something wrong over here. Uh, there are people out there who are willing to get to know me, who really want to understand where I'm coming from, my mission, my values, a little bit about my life and all of those things. So for the first two months, yes, I admit, uh, you know, I was worried that okay, uh, this, this high school bully of mine was going to comment or something like that, even though, to be honest and in all fairness, she probably doesn't even care about what I'm doing right now, okay? So, and I think that's also something that you have to understand, you know? People, you know, the ones who are talking negative about you, they will talk negative about you regardless of whether you're doing something right or whether you're doing something wrong, okay? So you might as well goddamn do what you please and just get on with it, okay? So that's kind of the mindset that I um, came across and I think there are two different ways to go about this. A, either move forward despite that thought holding you back, which is what I did, and then over time you start to gain confidence and the thought diminishes and then one day you do, you come on your stories and you realize that thought never even struck your mind. The next thing that you can do is, you know, kind of get over that thought and then start putting yourself out there, which in my case, it takes a lot of work and it takes a lot of time as well. It's not that easy to just remove, uh, you know, years and years of that trauma that you've uh, kind of suppressed inside you as well. So that's also the thing about confidence, guys. It doesn't come before you do something. It comes after you do something multiple times because you start to get comfortable with the way you do it, okay? And you start to uh, get appreciation from people, you start to get acknowledgements from people, and maybe it sounds a little bit petty. I don't think it sounds petty, but maybe you might feel, okay, I'm looking for external validation, but external validation is a great way for you to gain confidence as well. It's not the only way, it should not be the only way, don't get me wrong, but it does help, guys. It does help you with this journey of gaining confidence, okay? So that talks all about showing up. Consistency is key. Make sure that you are showing up consistently for your audience, making sure that you know they can trust you, that you are there for them. Okay, so that is what I mean when I say by showing up. You want to transfer, um, sorry, you want to kind of convert that mentality of you being a business page to you being an actual human with a mission, with a vision, with goals, and basically you want to show them that you are as human as they are. That's basically it, guys, okay? So that was pillar number four for us, guys. Pillar number five is conversion. Now. With conversion, what do I mean when I say conversion? Now, this is something that I teach at the tribe as well. Your customer's journey doesn't, you know, happen like this. You know, it doesn't happen that, okay, they come onto Instagram and then, 
you know, at the snap of your finger, they decide to buy your product or your service. It doesn't. Coming on Instagram and coming on your profile is actually one of many, many steps that they have to take for them to buy your product or service. And this is what we call stages, right? There are different stages that they have to go through. And with conversion, you want to make sure that every single time they see you or every, you know, a certain number of days or a period of time, they are moving forward towards buying your product or service. Because at the end of the day, you are there for something, right? There is some sort of sales goal or sales revenue that you are looking to make, right? So that's also super, super important. So whether it is, you know, creating good content for them to come onto your profile, whether it is creating a good bio and a, an awesome profile picture so that they actually follow you, then after they follow you, maybe they start liking. So how do you get them to like your post? How do you get them to uh, comment? How do you get them to save next? How do you get them to share your content? How do you get them to maybe talk about you on their Instagram page? There's so many ways and different stages that they have to go through for them to decide, okay, I want this person's product or service. I want whatever they are offering. You know, so a good way to kind of keep these conversions in mind is to either keep a good call to action in your captions, make sure that, you know, they are taking the next step, whether it's downloading your freebie, whether it is to share your content, whether it is to save your content, all of those things, make sure you're putting captions, uh, sorry, call to actions in your captions. Uh, even calls to action in your bio works really well as well. And then maybe in your bio link, make sure that your bio link has the audience taking steps towards you. You're not making the website or whatever link that you're putting so complicated that they don't know what to do, okay? So that's also something that you wanna keep in mind. Always keep in mind that at the end of the day, regardless of you know how much fun you're having on Instagram, and guys, you should be having fun, right? So regardless of how, how much fun you're having on Instagram, you are also keeping in mind that they are supposed to take steps towards your product or your service, okay? So conversion is my fifth pillar. Now my sixth pillar is nurture. Now this by far is my favorite pillar because it doesn't feel like work at all. And it should never feel like work, guys. Nurturing your audience, engaging with them, uh, you know, talking to them, that is the best part of your entrepreneurial journey. And that is something you need to, you know, start accepting. If you were to be not doing what you're doing, you know, hopping on this entrepreneurial journey, there are so many people you would never have met, so many people across the world, you know, restricted by boundaries and all of those things. And you are meeting them. You are having this chance to talk to them, to hear their thoughts, for them to hear your thoughts. And I think that engaging with my audience is Believe me, one of the fun things that I love to do, okay? Getting to know them and I stop, honestly, I don't think I ever thought of it as sales work or networking or something of that sort. I always thought of it as making friendships. That's it, it's as simple as that when it comes to me. And that has paid off a ton, guys. Maybe they did not buy my product or service, but they were there for me when I needed emotional support, when I was feeling low about my business. They encouraged me, they kept me going. Uh, not just that, they you know, shared my pages to other people. They supported me when there was someone who was uh, you know, kind of copying my content. They were all out for me. So it not necessarily comes as a monetary value back to you. It's just about forging friendships, okay? So that's one aspect of it. And yes, you wanna make sure that you are engaging with your audience so that they get to know you as a person. You, because to me, guys, and this is something that I strongly believe in, people are going to buy your product or your service because of who you are, okay? That's like 95% of why they're going to pick you is just, uh, sorry, 95% of why they're gonna pick 95% of why people are going to buy your product or service is going to be because of who you are and just the way they resonate with you. And think about it, guys. Think about any brand or any purchase that you've made. How much ever you might try to logically rationalize your purchase decision, 
it's always an underlying emotional one. There is something that connects you with that brand. There is something that resonates with you and that's why you chose them. So think of it as them connecting with you, okay? Think of this as a fun way for them to get to know you, for them to build that connection, for you to build relationships. At the end of the day, these are valuable relationships that you need to take some time to build. Because, and I consider myself so lucky, guys. I consider myself so lucky to have this opportunity to be connecting with so many amazing people from across the world. And I really think that once you start thinking of it from that perspective, it just gets so much easier. Uh, engaging with your audience, whether it's replying to their comments, using their first name, you know, taking that extra bit of effort to go to their profile, see their first name, get back to the comment and reply to the comment with their first name. All of those tiny, tiny bits of efforts is what is going to, you know, completely change their lives because it makes them feel seen okay it makes them feel like you value them you value the time that they've taken to actually write a comment for your post okay so all of those things you want to make sure that you're doing it because you're building relationships and not because you just want to network or get a sale out of them because guys whether you know it or not um their instincts will kick right up when they realize that you are trying to network with them because you want to sell, okay? So when you yourself are in the healthy mindset of just connecting and just building relationships and just building that network, um, you actually put them in a much more safe environment and they feel much more comfortable reaching to that decision of choosing you, okay? So that is nurture. A few tips that I do have for you is, you know, voice notes for your new followers, keep putting up content that engages two-way connections and not just you talking all the time. You want them to comment back, you want them to reply, you want them to talk about their feelings and their thoughts as well, okay? So that was pillar number six and it is by far my favorite pillar, okay? Then we have pillar number seven with analytics. Now, of course, whatever you are doing on Instagram, there is a sales goal, there is some sort of end game, right? I mean, it is a business after all. So how much ever you are having fun, of course, it is a business after all, and we want to uh, make sure that whatever we're doing, it is converting to something. It does mean something. There is some monetary value out of it. So there are key performance indicators that you need to keep for yourself, KPIs. You can either keep them as the number of saves for your post or the number of shares or how many followers you've been growing or how many profile visits, how many website taps that you've been having. Keep a few of them that are super, super important for your business and start working on improving them week by week or month by month. And the minute you start tracking, you become so much more conscious of your time spent on Instagram. You become much more conscious of your strategy. You just become overall conscious of where Instagram is leading your business, which is all, all healthy parts of growing your business. All right, guys? So make sure that there, you know, there is a return on investment for whatever activities you're doing on Instagram. And it's not necessarily monetary. I know I did mention monetary, but it also can mean building relationships, forging long-term relationships with your audience. Those count as well, okay? So that brings me to the end of the last pillar. Let's just go over all of the pillars just once. The first pillar that I did talk about was branding, you know, defining your brands, consider the needs and the problems of your audience, you know, your mission, the benefits of your offer, the tone, your impression that you want to give, all of those things come under branding. Of course, given that Instagram is a visual platform, you also want to keep in mind the visual aspects of branding. Then we have visibility. You want other uh, accounts to see your page, ensure that you, know, you have your bio all set up and all of those things because your audience takes less than eight seconds to make a decision to follow your page. Okay, then we have number three, and that is showing up as an authority. It's not necessarily about educational content. It can be anything and everything that makes you the number one person they're going to go to. Okay, then number four is, you know, showing up. Consistency is the absolute key, putting yourself out there, building that connection with your audience because they are getting to know you as a person is one of the key game changers that you will realize once you start implementing this. 
Then pillar number five was conversions. You want to make sure that they are taking tiny, tiny steps towards you and buying your product and services. So make sure that you are putting your calls to action in your captions, maybe in your bio link, the bio link, make sure that it leads to a website that's not confusing or complicated and so simple for them to understand, okay? Then number six is nurture. You want to make sure that this is a platform where people are getting to know you, you are building that connection, you are building fantastic relationships because guys, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity to get to know so many amazing people from across the world and A, I would love for you to take advantage of that, B, it's also going to help you grow your business as well, okay? And then seventh one and the last one was analytics. You want to make sure that whatever activities you're doing, you are getting a return on investment and your ROI, your return on investment, not necessarily has to be of monetary value. It can also be an emotional value as well. So these are the seven pillars. And I hope you guys liked this episode. This really brings me to the end of this episode. I absolutely enjoyed, you know, kind of writing down the notes for this episode and even talking to you guys, sharing my own experiences. If you guys liked this episode as much as I did making it, feel free to give me a thumbs up. If you're on YouTube, feel free to give me a review and five stars if you are on any of the podcast platforms. It really helps me with my ranking. It helps me help more people just like like you and it also helps me to keep doing what I love doing as well. So thank you guys so much for listening all the way up until here. It means so, so much to me to have your support. If any of the points resonated with you, feel free to, you know, click a picture of it and tag me on Instagram. I would absolutely love to see your progress through Instagram and, you know, I'm going to be there to cheer you on for your successes as well. That brings me to the end of this episode, guys. I will come back with another episode. For those of you who are wondering, who is this girl talking all about Instagram? You've caught me for the first time. I am Prit. I am the Marketing Nomad. I usually talk about Instagram tips, marketing tips. I also talk a little bit about my entrepreneurial journey, and I kind of wrap it all up in a fun, quirky, weird way that I am so proudly known for. All right, guys. That is going to be me signing off for today. I will catch you guys in the next episode. I always upload episodes on Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays. Okay, guys, if you've not subscribed, guys, feel free to do so, and you'll be alerted every single time my podcast episode or my YouTube video comes on live. Talk to you guys. I'm going to put all the relevant links in the bio, just in case you know, you're on the podcast episode and you want to catch the YouTube one, or you're in the YouTube and then you want to catch the podcast one because you're on the go. Whatever works for you guys. All right, guys. Bye-bye.